What's going on, everybody? I'm still having my coffee. That fucking bird outside, he's just... That motherfucker, that motherfucker's on fentanyl. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Ain't nobody chirping that fucking much in the morning. Hmm. All right. Let me tell you something. Back in 2021, it kind of flew under the radar because nobody was kind of looking at it. But the people that look at that stuff, you know. In Abu Dhabi, Ripple set up the first liquidity hub for XRP. Yeah, they used the partner, some company called PYY. PT, I think, something like that, whatever. But they're going to be a local liquidity. No, not that they are going to be. They are a local liquidity um, hub for XRP there for the region. So let me explain what this means. That partner having that liquidity pool of XRP available allows the local banks and businesses to basically, you know, tap into the system, transfer money and messaging via the ODL service, whatever they call it now, payments, solution, whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, like, at that point, I was, I, I remember saying to a couple of people in my circle, I'm like, do you understand that the Gulf states, you know, the oil producing states of the world, OPEC, just unplugged from the dollar system? Like, it was the big moment where it was like, oh, shit. See, I knew the technology was freaking robust. I knew they had the, they, they set up the gateway. And I knew everything was going to happen in America, replacing these old siblings. But when the, when the Middle East did this, it also started the process of a different type of expansion. Just look at what Saudi Arabia is doing. They're building, they're expanding in a way that doesn't even, it's not even human. They're like that, that big, long city and all kinds of stuff. Everything is expanding. And to my people out in the Middle East, la, 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 la. I know you motherfuckers love when I do that shit. I did that shit in the, in the airport at Dubai. Motherfuckers turned around like, yo, Osama, you still here? <laughs> is that you, Osama? Anyway, all I'm saying is this. I think that was the big oh shit moment because the reality is if the entire system of OPEC is looking to get on this blockchain in order to move the value of oil back and forth. I think that, you know, we could talk about all the stuff now, but I'm like, you really need to think about like 50 cents, 52 cents. No, what they're all waiting on. And this is, this is the important part because this is how it works. It's like a walkie talkie. Okay. If you're a kid and you got one walkie talkie, you are a lonely motherfucker. But if all your friends got a walkie-talkie, be like, yeah, what's up? What's up, dog? What's up? What's up? It's different. Right now, the Middle East technically has one walkie-talkie. And like India has one. And that's how they just, by the way, by the way, I'm going to say it here. When India bought oil directly from the UAE, what do you think they used? Exactly. So one walkie-talkie is over there, one relay. So now Abu Dhabi and India can move money back and forth for oil. This is not just gonna be movement of money and information, but the smart contracts tied to the movement of those assets. You know, you move oil, you know, those, those are assets. So that's a commodity. The, the, the bigger picture of this is, once XRP starts doing heavy into the smart contract world and getting into the supply logistics and workflow automation as far as like um, the, move, the, the digital movement of goods, 50 cents, you out of your fucking mind.